everyone. Jason Shepard here, M08.com. Welcome up to the cockpit. 2-3 Mike Zulu is what we're flying today, and we're talking about ACS slow flight. Remember, slow flight has changed quite a bit. For those of you who grew up like myself with PTS slow flight, well, it's quite different. Remember, PTS slow flight, we used to have it hanging by the stall warning horn. We'd get as close as we could to that stall and just hold it there. That's not exactly the case anymore. In fact, slow flight has changed quite a bit. They don't want us hanging by that stall warning horn anymore. The, and it makes sense. The FAA was worried. The FAA realized, perhaps, that they said, listen, we don't want people to hear the stall warning horn and just not think anything of it. Hearing the stall warning horn should cause a reaction. You should hear it, and you should do what? You should institute a recovery. Start a recovery in this case. Not get just used to hearing the stall warning horn. So that's what they really set out to establish. Now, I want to read to you, literally, uh, verbatim, how how it's, how it's uh, explained to us, how, how new ACS slow fly is going to work here. We're told to establish and maintain an airspeed at which any further increase in angle of attack, increase in load factor, or reduction in power would result in a stall warning. Example, Buffett, stall warning horn, whatever it actually may be in that case. That's what they're kind of warning us of in this case. They're saying that now. They go on a little bit further to say, listen, you're flying along and some turbulence brings on the stall warning horn. That's fine, as long as you do what? We can recover in this case. It's a continual, it's a prolonged hearing that stall warning horn and not doing something about it. That's what's going to fail us. So don't think, man, the stall warning horn came on, I instantly failed. That's not the case. You show them the right technique, you show them proper recovery, you'll be fine in that case. Let me show you slow flight, uh, ACS slow flight, in the dirty or landing configuration in this case. I already did my clearing turn just a little bit ago, but since I've been talking for a bit, I do want to just still double check. Everything still looks good. Carburetor heat's coming on. Premium number checklist is already complete. Bring in some power on back here, and I'm going to go ahead and bring in some flaps. Flaps are going to give me a tendency to climb up, so I'll be watching that, working in some flaps here. It's 20 degrees. Now, I want to get to, I mean, where, where is that speed, right? This, you have to know, where is that stall warning horn going to come on in this case here? And you're going to have to be leaving in a little bit more power in this case, right? I'm already getting almost right there. There we go. Hold my altitude real nicely. Got trimmed up real nicely. Ah, just a little bit. Nose down. There we go. I am right, uh, I'm about, about two or three knots faster than the end of the wide arc. My stall warning horn in this plane comes on a little bit late though in this case. Maintain my heading, maintaining my altitude, not any climb, not any descent, hands free, holding it in ACS slow flight. Now they also continue on. They say, what happens if that stall warning horn now comes on in ACS slow flight? Well, let's, let's do just that here. Let's go ahead, let's bring it on back. Remember, any any further, any abruptness, any change in load factor, I'm increasing that right there. There's my stall warning horn. I go ahead and do what? Full power, car repeat, recover. Flaps go right to 20. That's assuming again, if the stall warning the stall warning did come on, if you're flying this and it comes on, that's what we do. Through 70 flaps to 10, this is my recovery. It may not necessarily be your recovery in this case. And then positive rate of climber zero flaps up and out and resume back to cruise without losing any altitude in this case. That is what's so important here. ACS slow flight, it has changed quite a bit in this case. And I want to make sure you totally and you fully understand it compared to PC, PTS slow flight. So I have a question for you in the comments. Is ACS slow flight going to create safer pilots? Is ACS slow flight going to reduce the accident rate? I just want to know your opinion. Time will tell. But I'd love to know your opinion of ACS slow flight. Really, you, can you see both sides of it here? I mean, the, the FAA says, I don't want you here in the stall warning, or, or it comes on, you need to institute the unit recover. But, you know, flight instructors, myself and some others, you'll say, well, are we taken away from stick and rudder skills by not learning how to control the airplane at its true minimum controllable airspeed? You'll hear from a lot of instructors, myself included, that oftentimes um, I teach both. I say, this is Jason's slow flight, so I'm calling PTS slow flight. Now, show me this. This is how you're going to do it on a check ride, by the way. And I make sure to differentiate between the two so my students fully understand that. And I encourage you, with an instructor, to do the same. Practice old school, old school slow flight and practice the new school slow flight as well. So I can't wait to read your opinion, your comments down below this video. Hope you all are just having a wonderful week, able to do a lot of flying uh, this week and in the coming months. So listen, enjoy the rest of your day. And most importantly, remember, 
And a good pilot is always learn. Have a great day, guys. We'll see ya. I wrote the private pilot blueprint with the intention of, if I could do my flight training over, what I wish someone would have told me. And I want that book to be yours for free. All I ask is that you pay shipping. Visit privatepilotblueprint.com to get your free copy.